So at Con Expo, we introduced uh, some sand moldings of cone crushers, and we thought we'd spend a little bit of time and kind of show, share the history of each one of these cone crushers. Our oldest machine is the Simons Cone Crusher. The Simons was named after the original inventor's name, Edgar B. Simons, back in the early 1920s. Um, we built the Simons Cone Crusher under the Nordberg name. We built the Simons Cone Crusher for Edgar B. Simons for a couple of years until about 1928, and at about that period of time, Edgar B. Simon sold the patent rights of the Simons Cone to Bruno Nordberg. It became a true Nordberg product at that time, and since then, a Metzl product. Um, there was the first original vertical cone crusher ever invented. Prior to the Simons Cone Crusher, there was no vertical style cone crusher with a head that gyrated back and forth. It was a pretty efficient machine for its time. Maybe not to today's standards, but for its day, it was a pretty efficient cone crusher. The counter shaft had a speed of about 485 RPM. The head would gyrate back and forth, creating this compression style crushing action. The Simons Cone Crusher uh, about 60% of the material that would pass the closed side setting uh, would be equal to the closed side setting, or I should say about 60% of the product that exited the crusher would be equal to or smaller than the closed side setting. 40% was the closed side setting times two. The Simons Cone Crusher was available in two models. One was called the, the standard, one was called the short head. A standard would be used as a secondary crusher, the short head would be used as a tertiary crusher. The crushers were different, they weren't the same, they weren't interchangeable. If you had a standard cone crusher, it had to be used as a standard. If you had a short head, it had to be used as a short head in a tertiary application. That was 1925, and technology kind of stayed the same from 1925 all the way to about 1980. In about 1980, we introduced a new cone crusher, and that cone crusher was called the Omni Cone Crusher. The Omni name has a meaning also. The Omni Cone name means versatile cone crusher. Omni, versatile cone crusher. The Omni Cone became a very, very versatile cone crusher because it was application friendly. Unlike its predecessor, the Simons Cone Crusher, you could convert the Omnicone from secondary crusher to tertiary crusher by simply changing the wear parts that were fitted inside that machine. It made it a very versatile cone crusher for aggregate producers. It was also a more productive crusher. So basically we sped that machine up. Remember the Simons Cone Crusher operated at about 485 RPM. The, eight, the Omni Cone Crusher was sped up to about 700 or 750 RPM. By speeding up the counter shaft, speeding up the eccentric, it gave us more head gyrations per minute, which made that crusher a bit more productive. Remember I said on the Simons Cone Crusher about 60% of the product passing the crusher bottom is going to be equal to or smaller than the closed side setting. Because of the increased speed on the Omni Cone Crusher, that number changes to 70% passing the closed side setting. Only 30% was the setting times two. Now the other advantage of that slightly faster Omni Cone Crusher over the Simons is it tended to make more cubicle product. The Simons Cone Crusher, because of its slow speed, it tended to make a product that was more flat than elongated. To today's standards, it's not accepted in a concrete or asphalt mix. But the Omni Cone Crusher, because of its increase in speed, as long as we could keep it choke fed, it made a very cubicle product coming out the bottom. The Omni Cone was a very, very efficient crusher and a very uh, a very important crusher to our aggregate producers. We sold an awful lot of Omnicone start in 1980. Then in 1990, we introduced the HP series cone crusher, HP standing for high performance. It did become a high performance cone crusher for a couple of different reasons. Both the Simons and the Omnicone had something known as a low pivot point. A uh, pivot point is a, a non-moving part of the head or main shaft assembly that everything else gyrates against. All older crushers had a low pivot point, and any crusher that had a low pivot point uh, created something known as a, a, a single layered crushing action. And any crusher that incorporates a single layered crushing action tends to make more flat than elongated product coming out the bottom. Yes, the Omnicone, because of its increase in speed, made a bit more cubicle product. The HP Cone Crusher, we increased the speed even further. Most HPs nowadays run somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 RPM, which is a considerable increase in speed over even the Omni Cone Crusher. But more importantly, we raised the pivot point to the imaginary airspace way above the top of the crusher. And by increasing that pivot point, it resulted in top mantle movement. And that changed the crushing action. Remember, both the Simons Cone Crusher and the Omni Cone Crusher incorporated something known as a single layered crushing action. And now 
Now all that means is that we're basically squeezing rock between two opposing hard surfaces. And remember, historically any crusher that incorporates that single layered crushing action tends to produce a lot of flat and elongated product. By increasing the pivot point on the HP cone crusher to the imaginary airspace above the top of the crusher, we get the top of the mantle to move away from the top of the bowl liner. That changed, radically changed our industry because that was the first crusher ever designed that incorporated a multi-layered crushing action, meaning that when the mantle pulls back and comes back on a power stroke, it's crushing a multi-layered mass of material. It's basically grinding stones against each other, and by far and away, it made that crusher high capacity, very productive and capable of making a high volume of very cubical product. HP stands for high performance, comes in a wide variety of sizes. We move on to the MX Crusher. MX Crusher is relatively new technology. Uh, the MX Crusher is a blended machine. Uh, under the Metso umbrella, we make a, a very nice cone crusher called the GP Series Cone Crusher, which is a hydrocone style machine that has a, a dynamic setting adjustment mechanism where the, the head and main shaft go up and down. The concave ring never moves in a GP Crusher, a hydrocone style machine. So we took the, the best features of the HP, which is the threaded bowl design, and we took the best features of the GP crusher and blended them together to make a hybrid per se and we call it the MX series cone crusher. MX standing for multi-action. Multi-action referring to a multi-setting adjustment mechanism. We introduced the MX4 at Con Ag Con Expo three years ago. It was one of the most popular cone crushers at the Con Ag Con Expo show three years ago. We introduced the MX3 model this year. The dual adjustment mechanism is quite interesting. We have a piston just like a hydrocarbon cone crusher. We have a piston that raises the, the head assembly to its working position and then the bowl is going to turn down, thread itself down until it touches the, the mantle. Then it's going to count teeth backwards to get the crusher set at the close side setting the customer wants to operate at. In the event of an overload condition, the piston is allowed to lower about 65 millimeter, 2.6 inches or so to uh, allow anything uncrushable to pass that crushing chamber without stalling it out. So it's a revolution Revolutionary machine. It's something that's quite exciting to us right now, and uh, we think it's going to take off like wildfire. Just like the HP took off in 1990, just like the Omnicon took off in 1980, the Simons back in 1925, we think the MX is going to be the next wave of very popular crushers to be sold.